Continuing now with our post debate coverage, Senator Rand Paul hit the ground fighting last night, first with Donald Trump over a possible third party run by Trump. He buys and sells politicians of all stripes. He's already, Dr. Paul. hey, look, look, he's already hedging his bet on the Clintons, okay? So if he doesn't run as a Republican, maybe he supports Clinton or maybe runs as an independent. Okay. But I'd say that he's already hedging his bets because he's used to buying politicians. Well, I've given so just, him plenty of money. Then there was this exchange with Chris Christie over government surveillance. I want to collect more records from terrorists, but less records from innocent Americans. The Fourth Amendment was what we fought the revolution over. Uh, that's a completely ridiculous answer. When you're sitting in a subcommittee just blowing hot air about this, you can say things like that. When you're responsible for protecting the lives of the American people, then what you need to do is Here's to make sure is to make sure that Here's you use the, problem, the system governor. the way it's supposed Here's to work. Here's the problem, <laughs> Governor. You fundamentally un misunderstand the Bill of Rights. I don't trust President Obama with our records. I know you gave him a big hug, and if you want to give him a big hug again, go right in. Well, joining us now from Spartanburg, South Carolina, Senator Rand Paul. Senator, welcome. Uh, let's start with the Trump exchange, uh, uh, his refusal to pledge that he will support the Republican nominee. Uh, you weren't asked about it. You jumped in and interrupted him. How come? Well, you know, he's trying to run as an outsider, but here's the consummate insider who buys politicians, Republicans and Democrats. He's given $300,000 to Democrats, 300000 to Republicans. When they ask him why, he says, well, I give to them, so they'll do whatever the hell I tell them to do. Well, that doesn't sound like what we want to change, Washington. That sounds like the old ways of buying politicians and I'm horrified by the idea that we could consider someone who buys and sells politicians. He's bought access to the Clintons. And we think, well, gosh, it's despicable that she would sell access. But isn't it equally despicable that he's willing to buy access? Well, look, just for the record, because we ran that little bit at the end of the clip, people may not have been able to hear it. Trump said he's given you plenty of money. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly true. I do charity work through the University of Utah, and he has contributed to the University of Utah towards my mission work. I'll be leaving in a week to do cataract surgery in Haiti, and actually, he is a generous man. He is philanthropic, but that's a little bit different than buying and selling politicians giving to the University of Utah Eye Center. All right. Then there was the exchange when we just saw it. It got pretty heated and maybe a little nasty between you and New Jersey Governor Chris Christie over government surveillance. Look, you may or may not be right on the merits, and I'm not even asking you about that, Senator. Politically, when there is this growing wave of lone wolf terrorists, when people are more and more frightened that there may be the enemy here at home, isn't the argument that we don't want surveillance or the kind of surveillance we have now, isn't that a tough argument to make to voters? Well, you know, I actually want more surveillance of suspected terrorists. I just want to obey the Fourth Amendment, which is, says you have to name the terrorist, you have to have suspicion, and you ask a judge. On all of the instances where we have been attacked, we have had suspicion. The Boston bomber, we were tipped off. The Garland shooter, we had some evidence in advance. The Major Hassan mass murder in Houston, there was evidence to suspect him in advance. I'm all for targeted investigation. I'm just not for this sweeping surveillance state where we get all Americans' records without saying that there's any suspicion. It goes against the Fourth Amendment and it does invade our right to privacy. Uh, hitting Chris Christie for hugging Barack Obama after Hurricane Sandy, honestly, a little bit of a cheap shot. Well, this is a guy that's accusing me of something to do with fundraising. And if you will recall, he actually used taxpayer dollars that was supposed to go to Sandy victims to campaign for the governorship. This is illegal in most states. He spent millions. I mean, I think at least $5 million he spent on TV, taxpayer money of him strutting around, acting like he was bringing all this money for Sandy, not his money, the taxpayer money. But these were self-aggrandizement and advertisements during the middle of a campaign. He should be ashamed of himself, and he should actually pay the taxpayers back for using that money. Finally, uh, there's been a lot of commentary today because people noticed that you were very aggressive. You jumped in more aggressive maybe than you usually are. And the suggestion is maybe it's because you're lagging in the polls and you need to jumpstart your campaign. Was, did that factor into how you played the debate? 
Well, there's a different strategy if you're in first than if you're in seventh or eighth. And uh, yes, we do think we need to shake it up and we need to be part of the debate. There was a chance that I could be marginalized. I jumped in on the debate and still had the least amount of moments, and I don't fault anybody. But I think if you're not aggressive, and I was told this by everyone, you want to be heard, stand up and speak your mind. And you did let me speak, and I appreciate that. But I think I got my five minutes worth. I think people knew who I was, and I don't think people are going to forget what I had to say. And, and one of the points you made, and a lot of people said that uh, your, your closing statement was effective and maybe you should have made that point earlier, you're a different kind of Republican. If I have another two minutes, uh, Chris, I'll be happy <laughs> to make this statement. But it is hard, and it's just, I know your job's hard, too. You have 10 candidates. I did my best to jump in and do what I can, and then I speak. You know, I'll give five speeches in South Carolina today trying to spread my message. But the thing is, the one thing I wish I could have gotten to is my flat tax, because I have a 14.5% simplified tax, get rid of the IRS, get rid of all the tax code. And I think if we were to adopt my tax plan, I think we'd have an economic boom in our country like we have haven't seen in years. Well, Senator Paul, you come on Fox News Sunday. I'll give you, I promise you, you'll have a chance to explain the flat tax. And I got to say, as you well know, sometimes handling these 10 candidates on the stage was like herding cats. Senator Paul, thank you. See you on the campaign trail, sir. Thanks, Chris. Directly ahead, Ohio Governor John Kasich breaks away from many Republicans on the issue of gay marriage. We'll talk to him when the factor comes right back.